We're going to talk about media fact checking online and kind of determining when things are facts rather than fake news. So to start off with the objectives, we want to learn how to identify unreliable news. And we're going to do so by sharing online tools that will help you to fact check or also determine the extent of bias in news stories and authors, just because in our world, it's very much connected through the internet and sometimes information isn't necessarily true. We're also going to provide tips on how to see the whole story on social media and also share online tools for information regarding COVID-19 because that's something that's still highly prominent in our lives today. And it's really important that we're getting accurate information about the pandemic. So in terms of a few vocab words, Maybe you're familiar with them. If not, we're going to go over them briefly. To start off with fake news, this is kind of going to be referring to news that deliberately aims to spread false information or hoaxes to the people who are taking in or consuming the media. This does not include news that might be biased in a certain direction. Rather, it is specific information that has been made up. Next is algorithms, which is the coding which helps determine what you see online. And it's actually what's behind things such as the content you see in your Instagram feeds or things that come up when you're doing searches online. And also another very important term is bias. And we use this term to refer to any given person or also a system's inability to perceive without preference. Before we get into the kind of bulk of the conversation we're going to be having, I want to go over some notes on online media. The internet has, in fact, led to further democratization of news media. And this means that almost anyone can start a website or post articles, information, their takes on things, etc. And because of this, it is highly important that individuals do the work to determine if what they're reading is actually correct and that there's maybe scientific or relevant evidence supporting whatever information you're reading, and also considering if there are any biases in place as well. We're going to start off by talking about news specifically. So there are a few types of unreliable news. Firstly, satire, which are sites that use humor, irony, or also may be using kind of hyperbole to provide exaggerated or false information that kind of is in response to current events. And there's also extremely biased or hyper-partisan news as well, which are sources that express a particular point of view and confirm biases that already exist. Examples of this include sites that rely on propaganda, information that is out of context or misinterpreted, and also opinions that are presented as facts rather than simply opinions. Now, a couple more types of unreliable news. Firstly, clickbait, which are articles that are general, generally credible, but do use exaggerated or misleading headlines that then attract people to read the articles. There's also conspiracy theory and junk science, which are sources that create or promote conspiracy theories that are not based on true evidence or that have not been actually um, proven to be true. And also fake news, which includes sources that fabricate information. They also sometimes distort actual news reports and spread generally deceptive content, which is created purely for financial gain. So rather than a misinterpretation, misinter it's actually created with this kind of um, aggressive intent. So you might be wondering what actually makes this information unreliable. Firstly, you will not be able to verify it through other sources that are well known. It also may intentionally be appealing to emotions because unreliable news plays on feelings to ensure that you won't be skeptical of the contents. It's really going to try to connect with the readers and the consumers in order to prevent them from second guessing what the content actually is telling you. It also may be from a fake site. So if you don't recognize the website address, for example, if it looks weird or unfamiliar, it's probably unreliable or downright false. It may even be a copycat trying to pretend like it's another accurate source. For example, abcnews.com.co is not the correct web address for the actual news outlet. 
Additionally, it may not have any expert opinions or sources linked so that you can see where their information is from. And this will prevent you from actually moving out of the article to outside addresses that will be able to relate to the topic or, or the article. So that will prevent you from actually seeing if the information is true. Additionally, you may have trouble finding claims elsewhere on the internet. For example, authors of articles who are export experts and do not have credentials or journalists and expert are not consulted. You also may not even see an author's name at all, so you won't be able to verify the identity of the person who wrote it. You can look up the claim or idea in a known reputable news source, and if you're not able to find any other content pertaining to that specific topic, it's probably untrue. So we do want to be able to then take steps to actively find out if the source is unreliable. And here there are, are a few strategies that you can use to spot fake news. Firstly, you always want to consider the source. You can click away from the story to investigate the site, its mission, its contact information, and even search up the author if they're claiming to be a credible source or an expert in the field. And do, by doing so, you will be checking the author. So you can do a quick Google search. Are they credible? Are they even real? Are they well known? It's also a good idea to read beyond as headline, headlines can be outrageous in an effort to get clicks. So you really wanna be able to see what the actual or the whole story is. You should also be looking for supporting sources. So you want to click on any links that they provide as citations to determine if the info is actually supported by other research. Also, you do want to check the date as reposting old stories doesn't mean that they're relevant to current events and information in these stories may also have been proven false. So you wanna make sure that it's update, up to date and current. Additionally, you want to check your personal biases. Consider if your own beliefs could be affecting your judgment or the way you're interpreting the information. Furthermore, sometimes things that are posted on the internet are actually meant to be taken as a joke. So if it's too outlandish, it may be de um, defined as satire. So you wanna research the site and author to be sure and to really understand what their intent is with the information. And finally, you can ask the experts, such as a librarian or consult a fact-checking site as well. Next, what are some things that actually make news or a site reliable? Firstly, the publication has a reputation for fair reporting. So it's a well-known well source and many people kind of refer to it. And in general, it's something that is used to convey correct information. It relies on facts. It cites its sources and provides adequate evidence and it is not unique. So it's kind of well known that it's part of the mainstream media and other similar sources will be posting the same kinds of information. Now here we've provided you with some fact checking resources. Firstly, Snopes, which is one of the original fact checking websites. It does deal particularly with urban legends, news stories and internet memes to check if they're reliable. There's also PolitiFact, which was created and run by the Pulitzer Prize winning editors and reporters of the Tampa Bay Times. So they of course have a lot of experience with media and they're going to be helping to actually determine if your information is reliable. And then also the Washington Post fact checker, which is run by the Washington Post. And it is one of the most trusted bipartisan news sources on politics. And we can put these links in the chat for you, or we can also allow you to access them once we send you a copy of the slideshow, you can just click on the links. Now there are also some bias checking resources. Firstly, All Sides, which is a site that offers a well-regarded bias rating system, and its intention is to help news consumers see and understand different perspectives and have a better kind of understanding of where the author's perspective is in um, actually lands so that we can understand kind of where they're writing from and their intentions. Then there's also Media Bias Fact Check, which is also known as MBFC for short which is an independent site dedicated to educating people on media bias. And it also sheds light on deceptive news practices to educate people on how to avoid um, kind of falling into these traps. And now we're gonna talk about social media, which is another very important category when it comes to reliable information that we're consuming. 
To start, we're going to discuss bots that are online. In particular, a bot is a software application that runs automated tasks over the internet. And it's important to note that some are helpful, while others may be malicious. Since bots can easily be used in campaigns to spread misinformation, this is one of the reasons why they are not exactly ethical and are not going to be providing you with reliable information. It's important to note that they are everywhere on the web, and they may even be on your Facebook, Twitter, in the comment threads, on videos and news articles, etc. So they can be really anywhere on the internet. And it's important to know how to actually identify a bot online so you don't find yourself maybe trying to communicate with them or believing false information. How to actually identify bots online. Firstly, you want to consider anonymity. Real people sharing real stories will have full accounts that have all of their information and typically have a photo of themselves as well. They will have friends, followers, family, and they're going to be engaging with their friends' content. The opposite is true if you're looking at a bot's account. It's going to lack specific information. It could have a generic profile and a photo, such as a, a well-known landmark, and it's not going to actually seem like a real person. You won't be able to imagine a real person behind the account. Additionally, activity is very important to consider. You can consider the frequency of their posting, as well as the success of those posts, as these are indicators of a bot. An example of this is if you come across an account with only one post, it has zero followers, um, but the post actually has thousands of shares. So you just want to be making sure that whatever you're seeing seems normal. It doesn't re raise any red flags to you, and it is just probably what you would see in a typical person. If not, there is a chance that it is a bot. You can also look into their content. People that are creating bots have an agenda typically. It may be to drive traffic to a website. It might be financial, for example, generating income. They may want to spread political disinformation, et cetera. So maybe looking at where they're coming from, what their perspective is, and whether or not you think that they're pushing misinformation onto people who are looking at their content. Also, a lot of bots use stolen photos. So for example, a profile photo may be stolen a quick test can be run on their profile picture through Google Image Finder to find the real owner of the image. And people may be taking pictures of, say, their family members or their friends or maybe a trip that they went on and then posting that as their profile photo. And that's an original photo, so you're not going to be able to find that anywhere else on the web, whereas bots will mostly just have some sort of stock photo or an image that easily comes up with a Google search. And now a bit more about algorithms and how Facebook feeds and other social media feeds actually work. They're called echo chambers. And similar to Facebook, Instagram and Twitter can be great ways to share and find news. But these media feeds are using algorithms that are deciding what you want to see. And because of this, they can then turn into an echo chamber, which means that they're only feeding you news you already know and opinions you already hold rather than providing you with new information or contrasting perspectives. And this prevents you from getting a holistic view of the story or the situation. Now it's important to understand the policies and practices of social media sites on facts and news. Though some social media sites have made strides to assist their users who want to double check accuracy of posts, for example, Instagram, whenever people make posts about COVID-19, they link a resource that take you to a specific site that will provide you with um, valid information, such as government websites. But there are other social media sites that do not have these measures in place, if any, and this will not be protecting users against sharing a false information. So it's important to realize that there may not be regulations in place that's actually pre preventing this from happening. Now we're gonna look into Facebook's policy in particular. In June, 2020, Facebook announced that they would start putting notices on certain political posts. And this took place in many countries and regions where Facebook works with a third party fact-checking organization. And this is a certified organization. And it's been deemed as adequate by the fact-checking network 
that is international. It's also known as IFCN, and it's used to spot and review any misinformation or political content, and then it's going to take action to eliminate any possible consequences. But it's important to remember that posts on Facebook made by any user still do not need to be factually accurate to be posted onto the internet. So always make sure to double check the facts of a post before sharing it or believing it to be true. You can also click on the link provided at the bottom of the slide to read more about fact checking specifically for Facebook. Next, similarly, Twitter also has policy. It implemented this policy to link um, any posts that are made about COVID-19 and voting to fact-checked resources, similar to what I was saying about Instagram. And the tweets themselves do not get centered, censored or fact-checked directly on the site. So it's also important to realize that Twitter does not apply this policy to all tweets and Twitter accounts, only ones that are deemed as larger threats. So it's still very much possible for factually incorrect content to be shared on Twitter. And additionally, the content that gets marked is up to human discretion, meaning who gets check and who does not um, kind of has biases. So it's important to realize that there are still biased opinions in play here. It's also important to realize that Google is biased just as we are as humans. So search engines were created by humans and are therefore susceptible to the biases of their creators and also susceptible to the biases of the users. So when you use a search engine, it's gonna give you results it thinks that you want to see based on algorithms that are in place behind the scenes that you actually can't see. The way that you ask questions on a search engine will impact the results that you see. And therefore, it is important to consider any biases embedded in your search terms when you're trying to access news through search engines. It's also important to always remember that opinions drive more traffic. Because the field of journalism is becoming increasingly overcrowded in terms of opinion pieces, the ones that are the most controversial tend to provide more traffic to sites. And therefore, sites are relying on traffic to actually have an income, and occasionally that may take precedent over providing unbiased opinions. So if sites are really trying to have an inflow of financial gain, then they may be willing to sacrifice their reliability to get more people to come to their sites. So always be conscious and don't presume anything to be unbiased, even if it's coming from otherwise trust trusted news sources. And always be conscious whenever you're going to any site at all that there could be maybe false information or biases. Something that's really helpful to do and get in the habit of doing each time you access a website even if you think you're on a trusted news site, you want to check the URL. For example, there have been cases in which sites pose as other news sites and then po post false information and people believe it to be true because they're deceived as to whether or not they're on the real site. CNN, NBC, and Fox have all had their sites copied to dupe people into thinking that they're actually reading a real story from the news source. So always check that the URL is correct. It has the correct spelling of words and there aren't any additional or weird symbols or underscores or anything like that. Also, you want to click the links. You can't always assume that an author or a publisher has actually sufficiently interpreted the source that they're using to base their information off of. So it's always a good idea to go back to those sources, read them for yourself and then determine whatever they were saying in their article to be true or false. And if you are reading an article and you wanna make sure it's on a safe site, then you can click on links that are attached to then open those sources. And this allows you to see for yourself if that author is properly sourcing their information. For example, many sites use hyperlinks. So the writing will appear in blue typically. And that means that if you click on that writing, you'll be able to access another site where they got their information from. Now we're going to go over some reliable information sites. Firstly, in terms of environmental information, you can go to the World Meteorological Organization Statement on State of Global Climate. You can then use the report that's released each year by the WMO, which provides in-depth reports on the current measurements in state of climate, climate change indicators, and this will provide you with accurate information. It's also good to access organizations such as the UN, 
specifically the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And on this site, you can read all the reports that the UN has released. And specifically, this panel is in charge of assessing climate change science, and you can receive scientific information from there. You can also go to Skeptical Science, which is a great source for getting the truth of the climate crisis and understanding how to debunk skepticism relating to climate change, because there are a lot of people out there who still are not necessarily on board with climate change. So it's important to be able to flag fake news in this area. Now you can also get general health information. A few sources that are known to be reliable include Daily Med, if you want to learn about medications or drugs, and it's sourced from the FDA, which makes it very reliable. The Mayo Clinic, as well as Johns Hopkins, which are institutions that provide reliable online information pertaining to medical conditions, as well as procedures. And also the NIH Office of Dietary Supplements, if you want to have information on nutrition and things such as vitamins and supplements, which are also very important. So that concludes our presentation for today. We want to thank you so much for listening and let you know that if you'd like to learn this lesson with a Cyber Seniors Mentor, to please go to our website or call our phone number to register for a one-on-one -on -one phone session. We do also host weekly tech drop-in sessions from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time on Thursdays, and everyone is more than, um, more than welcome to join in if you have any tech questions.